the rebellion of Upper Canada happens in 1837 to 1838. But how do we get there? Let's start here. So as we saw in our previous video, there are some conflicts between the upper house and the lower house, which I've pictured here. This is upper and this is lower. And just by way of review, we know that the upper house is controlled largely by this family compact and the lieutenant governor who answers to the monarchy. So we'll draw a little crown up there again. The legislative assembly, again, is uh, elected uh, by people that are there in the colonies. And so because of the veto power of the upper house, and the lower, uh, the lower house becomes angry and upset with the lieutenant governors over time and also the family compact. One of the people that becomes a voice for the lower house is a person named William Lyon McKenzie. Uh, and he is the editor and publisher of a newspaper called The Colonial Advocate. Uh, and in this, initially, he is uh, advocating for things like uh, for people to strike or stop working, for people maybe to stop buying British goods, and people to protest in order for the concerns of the lower house to be heard by the upper house and considered. Um, however, his newspaper at the time was not doing very well. And so he was losing a lot of money. That's why we have this little down arrow here with the dollars. And because he was losing lots of money, he was in debt and he didn't have the money to pay the debt. And so he ran away to the United States for a time and just settled there so that the, debtor, or the, the debt collectors couldn't find him. While he was gone, the family compact, who was not liking what he was publishing anyway, they decided to take his printing press which he used to make copies of the Colonial Advocate, and they threw it into Lake Ontario and destroyed it. Mackenzie, who's up here again, hears about this in the United States and says, I'm coming back and I'm suing. I'm going to sue the family compact for destroying my property. So he comes back, goes to court, and he actually wins and becomes a hero, especially to those in the lower house. Um, and so William Lyme Mackenzie, if we come back down here, once he's back in Canada, he advocates for something called responsible government. And he wants really more power to be given to the lower house. After all, they are elected. And shouldn't the will of the people govern the colonies? So he is appointed to the lower house in 1829 and 1831. But after some time, the family compact, or the Tories, let's say, that's a bigger group, they don't like what he's saying and they tried to have him ousted and they do have him kicked out of the lower house from time to time. This frustrates William Lyon Mackenzie. We'll just draw some steam there. He's getting very frustrated. And he starts advocating, this is him down here again, for armed rebellion. He said, if they're not going to listen to us, if they're just going to try to stop me in any way they can, then let's, let's take up weapons and let's fight. And so in 1837, you have a rebellion that happens in Upper Canada. And what it really leads to is that the British come in. First of all, the British, go, once uh, Mackenzie starts raising a fuss, the British start taking away the powers of the lower house, even the little powers that they did have. And then once the rebellion starts, the British come in with their troops. They find the homes of the rebels and they burn them. I have a little fire coming out of the houses here. And the rebellion is quashed. Um, so the British get out of this one, but it's, we're going to see that there's another one that happens in lower Canada around the same time. And then they have to start asking questions as to what is going on in the colonies and what do we do to try to make things better? So that's where we'll be going next.